Hello and welcome to another video from Irish Touch Toys Games and Collectibles. And today we're looking at the 1987 release by Daypool from their Doctor Who series of action figures and play sets. And this particular one we are looking at today is of the TARDIS, the time and relative dimension in space, Doctor's time and spaceship, um, or the police public call box, whatever you like to call it. Okay, so this is the box that it comes in. And the front of the box, it says Doctor Who from DePaul, and you can see an image of the TARDIS um, in the bubble as it appeared at the beginning of the Sylvester McCoy's intro um, in Doctor Who. Okay, so that's the front of the box. If I just turn the box to the side, um, there you go. You can see an image of the uh, TARDIS itself, this, the, the, this particular um, item. And in the box, you can see an image of the Melanie action figure and the uh, Seventh Doctor figure standing by the side of it. And it says, features flashing light, opening doors, opens out to form back scene with console set. And at the bottom, it's got the license information, BBC 1987, licensed by BBC Enterprises Limited. Um, and it says Tetrap, courtesy, copyright, Pepper Jane Baker, Dayball, Wilmsford, Cheshire, um, CW1, 1HW. And if we turn the box around to the other side, yep, we've got exactly the same on the other side. Um, just a little bit different information. Same image. It's got features, flashing lights, opening doors, opens out to form back scene with console set. Barcode is item number W.5. And it's got made in, in, in England and Hong Kong by Daypole. And if we turn the box to the back, um, and let's just bring it forward a little bit, and you, it says Doctor Who, and it shows the Doctor, a Time Lord from Gallifrey, Mel, the last companion of the Sixth Doctor and the first companion of the Seventh, the Tetrap, the first monster to encounter the Seventh Doctor, it's got the TARDIS, time and relative dimension in space, the Doctor's time machine. K9, the Doctor's personal robot dog computer. And at the bottom there, it says the TARDIS console room. And you see an image of Sylvester McCoy as the Doctor. And he's got from the pole. And at the bottom of the box shows the same image, Doctor Who and the TARDIS in the bubble. And the top of the box shows exactly the same image. Okay, so that's the box itself. Let's open it up take it out and have a good look at it outside of the box okay so i've removed it from the box and it comes in this polystyrene case which i think um you just just pull it out i think i don't want to press too hard because it's um i don't want to damage it but let's okay i think i'm gonna have to do this off camera because I, it's it's very very tight Okay, so I removed it from the box, and as I took it out, uh, it came apart, but it's meant to come apart because it does form the backdrop of the console room. Um, so these go together. Um, I don't know, I don't think that's involved, but the, there's the base, or you can keep the base on to the um, TARDIS bottom there, um, and you can pretty much have that however you like. Now, the, the top where the flashing light is, um, there's an on and off switch at the top there. Um, it's not working. Why is it not working? Ah, we've got no batteries in it. Okay, I'm just going to go and put some batteries in this, and let's check to see if it works. Okay, so I've just inserted two batteries in there. You can see I've just put them in. Uh, I'm just going to close that uh, back section back up. And there we are. And let's turn it on. Hopefully it'll work. Oh, yeah, there we go. So the light's on. Oh, it does flash, and it's flashing. There we go. So that's the top of the TARDIS police box. Flashes. So it's just it's just basically an on-off switch. There's no sound or anything on it. It just literally flashes. So let's just turn it off for a second. Now, as I said to you, this all slots back together. Um, you can see you've got the, the, the lugs on the side there, and they just slot back in um, together there, and the lugs go back round the uh, base, as you can see. Um, and that's all gone back together quite nice there's a little bit of polystyrene on there just remove that and then you've got the lid where's the front of the doors there's the doors there uh, incidentally the doors open outwards or they open inwards on these whichever way you prefer um, to stick with tradition they should be on the outside and the lid 
or the top just drops on the top there and there we go uh, the TARDIS is all back together again and there she goes in land off and take him take off mode uh, with the flashing light it does look pretty cool actually when that lights up because you get the background light as well um, okay so that is the box let's get some sizes um, let's get me ruler now so we are looking at from the base to the top of the lamp we're looking at 18 centimeters and the widest part is the base which is nine centimeters so that's nine centimeters squared basically so nine 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 so that's the size so that's nine centimeters all the way around and 18 centimeters from bottom to top um, if we take off the lamp we're looking at about 16 and a half centimeters Okay, um, it's made of full plastic, um, and it is the classic um, police box shape. As I say, the doors open, you can open them inwards or you can open them outwards. It's entirely at your preference, and the whole thing comes apart very easily. Let's just turn that light back off. You just lift off the lid. Um, the sections here, they just come apart, um, and then you've got the door um, way. The, these are joined. They, those don't come apart um and that one is joined as well that doesn't come apart uh, but that's your backdrop um, for the TARDIS console if you have the TARDIS playset to go with it okay that is the uh TARDIS so how well did this TARDIS did these do well DePaul had the license to produce Doctor Who figures and um play sets for quite some time um, during the 80s um, they did buy out a lot of the old marks um, molds um, and they did produce daleks um, that were from the original marks molds as well as producing them um, from their own molds as well as all the characters and so on so there was quite an extensive range that they pulled produced and at the time they were the only ones manufacturing doctor who merchandise so they were um I wouldn't say they were fantastic sellers um, because, again, it was only specialist shops that had them. And back in the 80s, there was, wasn't very much internet about. Um, really, The internet really didn't come on until the uh, 90s or the early 2000s. That's when it really um, took a grip on the nation or, or the world globally, in actual fact. Uh, but prior to that, there wasn't much online um you could order stuff from magazines uh, but that was generally it so um compared to how they items would sell today if if you had the uh internet as it is now um back in the 80s um i'm sure these figures were just done phenomenal but uh, but because of the limitations uh, i don't think overall they sold particularly well um, don't get me wrong, they did sell a lot of product um, and they did do a lot of events. Uh, so I know at Longleat they had uh, day poll events. Um, they also um, had events uh, where they uh, back in, down in Cardiff, I think. Um, and there was a few other events. I know they've done events. Um, the, the, the Doctor Who exhibition in, in Blackpool also had a, a big day poll event going on. So there was a lots of events that they did promoting the product, but as I say, it, you had to go to those events or you had to go to a specialist shop to be able to buy them, uh, which was sad, really. You couldn't just get them in a normal toy shop, but um, but there we go. So they could have done a lot better, um, but obviously they didn't, and um, they've now become incredibly collectible. And some of these items are so expensive now. The play sets are just a phenomenal amount of money, especially if it's the 25th anniversary one, which was limited edition. Um, and uh, well, pretty much all of them were limited edition. They didn't actually run them for very long um, before the, the line finished. Um, I think the license ended um, in the early mid nineties, um, or just before, well, certainly ended before the um, movement to, for the new Doctor Who series uh, was produced, and the license went to character options. Um, so that is the a bit, little bit of brief history on the products. Um, but obviously now they're extremely collectible, highly sought after and very difficult to find, especially in this mint condition in the box. Uh, incidentally, um, this is all shop stock, um, which we found in a shop that we bought. It was a specialist toy shop 
a specialist model and, and uh, toy and comic shop. Uh, and there was a whole collection of uh, day pole, a whole box full of day pole products, which was in the in the stock that we bought when they closed down. And this particular item was one of them. So this is a former shop stock item, um, as is most of the day pole items that we have in stock now. Um, and they are currently available to purchase on the Myers Touch website, which you can get to quite simply by clicking the link below. It takes you straight to the website where you'll be able to find this and many other vintage Doctor Who items and many other vintage toys, games and collectibles come to that. There's over 10,000 products currently available on the website for you to view and purchase at your leisure. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because we are uploading videos for every new item that goes into the website. There will be something for everybody. And I am absolutely positive you're not going to want to miss this because we literally have thousands and thousands of new products which we're shooting videos for and uploading on a daily basis. So if there is something in particular you are looking for, something old that you've never been able to find, something quirky you might want to buy for a friend, or maybe just something from your childhood that you'd like to own again to help you recuperate those long-lost childhood memories. Well, stay tuned, keep watching, because you never know the next item we upload could be the item you've been looking for. Okay, that is it for me on this particular item. I hope you've enjoyed this very short video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.